processing. Uh, Jason, have you ever studied anything other than English? Yes, I have. Have you ever stepped out of your natural Southern dialect? <laughs> uh, yeah, I studied Russian for a little bit, and then I studied um, oh, cook the Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> this is in Borat, bro. Borat. <laughs> <laughs> you guys clock radio? I have clock radio. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. the first one was better than the second one. Yeah, it was just it was because it was so original. Yeah, exactly. Totally yeah. edgy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you so you have studied other languages? Yes, and and it's uh it, my brain is like like yeah. it's it's uh, it's, it, it's a tough road for it to go down. I can see the I know you're I, studying Germany. <laughs> German. I've been studying Germany. <laughs> ah, Germany. <laughs> I've been studying Germany. Ah, Bavarian. <laughs> nice. The um, Ger- yeah, German's an interesting language, uh, but the, the process of how we learn a language and how machines learn from us speaking languages is interesting. You know, um, I'm sure when you learned whatever language you had, it was just in a text format or like having a teacher. Mm-hmm. Okay, and listening then, to uh, CDs or tapes over and over and over again. You so, uh, let's talk about this point. You are listening to CDs and tapes over and over and over again. Right. You got the same input, the same speaker. Right, and then trying to say it right, and then you're trying to repeat it. Right. Okay. So there's been a little turn of the tides here, you know. And I want to say shout out one to Rosetta Stone. Mm. They're, you know, native speakers and the ability for it to ask you to pronounce something and make sure that you match those intonations and the pieces of the dialect that is natural that to that specific language is, is quite incredible. And that obviously took the next step, you know, when you have things like um, Alexa. Right. And it's constantly listening to what you're saying, and it has to go back into Amazon servers and analyze all the different dialects, tones, maybe, you know, certain nuances of how people speak in a certain area. But still recognize, oh, me and my machine machine algorithm, machine learning algorithm is processing what's going on here with this language. So this is uh, so it, it takes that obvious step where you in your learning process, I'm going to listen, 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 listen. And now what we've done is we put this into this cloud format where we start pulling in all this data of people speaking and machines can analyze and listen, 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 and not just to one voice but to millions of voices. Mm, yes. So the data sets for um, these natural language processing algorithms that sit up in the cloud have become very, very advanced. And they're, they're now taking steps like, okay, we've done a good job analyzing English. How do we branch this off into more languages now? First of all, English is a garbage language. You know I get into this all the time. Mm-hmm. English does a very poor job in terms of its descriptors for, you know, you know, describing your world or how you feel, emotions, or like pushing multiple concepts together. The best languages in the world for that are German and Sanskrit, hands down, in terms of description. But, you know, thanks to British imperialism and everything else, you know, a lot of people speak English. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. A lot of people speak English all over the globe, even though it's, you know, it's not very good. Um, it's not great. So... You know, we've gone through that analysis with that natural language processing, and now there's like three fundamental, you know, uh, benchmarks that it's starting to hit where, okay, how are we going to advance these algorithms? How are we going to pull in more languages? And the third one being, you had it on here? Yeah, accuracy, the state of the art, Uh keep improving. And then second is more pre-trained models become widely available. And number three is better support for underrepresented languages. Yeah, so so accuracy is huge. Is it, how, is it really giving me the proper feedback from what I'm saying? Mm. Every word I output is data. So in, in our human context of you and I, when I... And, say, and we're going to learn this. I want people to hear what Alex just said. Because as Amazon Alexa is just the beginning. Yeah. Because typing is so inefficient. Typing is incredibly inefficient. When these machine learning algorithms get our voices down perfectly, mm-hmm. we're going to say... What was that pizza? We're going to talk to a device and say, what was that pizza I ordered a month ago? It was so good. Yes. Where was that place at? And they're going to be like, it was $28.62. Would you like me to order that now for you? Yeah. And so that's where our advertising 
marketing is going to. Yeah, it's going to feel like that sort of Jarvis system that Iron Man uses, Tony yes. Stark. Yes, exactly. It becomes very conversational. It understands how you operate and how her or her and how you like to receive that information mm-hmm. back. I need one of those. I love it. <laughs> Super cool. I could be like, I'm feeling a little lonely. Yeah, but typing is naturally inefficient. Yes. And typing also has a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. But we're moving into this world of... Especially when I send an email. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look, you see that pause Smash I got? Smash my head against the wall. You should see how, how quick I type stuff you No, know, it's hysterical. Too. Like, Stat. I, I go on, on Slack, Slack, and I'm, like, yeah. watching the dots go, I'm, like... 10 minutes <laughs> and then all i get back is like a seven word sentence i'm like this is unbelievable i literally go to, to, i should probably use the voice but the official i wonder if the voice thing would work good the voice uh, thing's great with alexa it's improved a lot i mean not alexa uh I, it, the apple part uh, yeah but is slack that would be interesting so is it using apple's voice recognition to type the words out or is it using slack's no it's not voice recognition? it's not using slack it's using apple it's built into their their keyboard their software and so then it just translates that into script. That would probably do a lot better job than my typing, huh? Yeah, much better. <laughs> much better. And what's cool about it is that, you know, there is a difference between how someone types, their tone, their grammar, their syntax, mm-hmm. as opposed to how they're actually speaking. And so when we look at these sort of inputs and the changes, accuracy is going to be one thing because there's so many data sets coming in. There's so many inputs by human beings that it can say, oh, that was accurate or wasn't. But that has to, that's beholden on a human being to come in and say, that's not what I said. Mm. So we're here interacting essentially with these models to actually improve that accuracy. And it's important, like I want to go back to the original concept. Every time you and I are speaking, that is data. In a biological format, every word coming out of my mouth, you receive it as tone through the ears and then you process it as a thought. And then that thought can go back in inside of you and then you know you reform it and then spit something out. It's like you're doing your own you know, biological algorithm in your head to say, oh, I understand what Alex said. I know, I know what my filter is. Was that accurate? Yes. Was it? No. Do I need clarification? Do I need to go back out and retest my algorithm? Yes, I do. So this interaction that you and I naturally have is something that has been put into these machine learning models. And because there are so many scientists working towards natural language processing, these preset models have already come out. So if you have a startup and you're saying, I want to get into language processing or create some sort of new product or service, you can go through a whole catalog of different offerings of people that say, this is my algorithm, it's used this way, or for this specific subject, I want to use it in the medical field, you know, legal transcription. Why do I still have a stenographer in court? Yeah, that's always interesting. Bye, see you later. Yeah, when we have artificial intelligence. Why do we have, you know, if you want to have the least amount of touch points in a hospital, especially to keep places clean, why do you have keyboards? They're disgusting. Right. Someone, I should be able to walk into a hospital room. It records everything that's being said by the doctors and the nurses, okay? No one has to worry about typing or writing anything down. And then it's immediately put into script and stored in whatever HIPAA secure database associated with that file. All these things are possible, and that's what it's gaming towards. But the efficiency of these models will increase if someone comes <laughs> and they would say, we want to... <laughs> no, I'm picturing you right now, um, us walking into this medical facility. Yeah, you feeling it? And, and no, I know. I'm walking into this medical facility and there's like these little robots, you know, <laughs> and they're just like ultra nice. And hello, everything's, Jason. Yeah. Hello, hello Alex. <laughs> and everything is like super sterile. Yeah. And just like weird, you well, know. It's it, should, like it should be that. Minority, uh, we were speaking, talking about Tom Cruise yelling earlier. Um, about his COVID policies yeah, on his set. Yeah, COVID on his set. And you guys should listen to that. Um, but uh, that Minority Report, wasn't that the Minority movie? Report, yes. Yeah, where it was kind of that whole idea of this world, you know, pushing. And when we get into our voice, this is what I'm afraid of. And this is what I think is going to happen. You have a fear? I, I, I not, not really a fear. Um, I'm just, I'm careful with your words. My language processing and what you're saying, that's why I'm asking you, right? Is it really fear that you have? No, a concern of mine. Okay. Um, and I think it could turn into a fear for humanity is that once we begin to you, once these large companies begin to use our voice Mm -hmm. and then that information of our voice, because like music is a hard, now I start singing. Now we have a whole different issue. Now I'm giving a speech. Now we have a copyright issue. Mm -hmm. So how much of a company am I going to allow my voice, my words to how much of that data would I give to them? Well, you, if it is data, because that's what you're saying it is data. It's, 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 it's a form of unstructured data. Right. So just like, you know, how DocuSign came out with the electronic signature, right? 
It came from my computer. I touched the document this time. No one else touched it. I, I own that, right? I own that signature. You can still put that same sort of electronic signature on your voice profiles. If I have specific intonations that are happening and I carry that, that's, that is only specific to me. And that's a, that is one signature that if even someone tried to come out and use it, I'm sorry, but that doesn't match. It's essentially like a forged document. Mm -hmm. And so if they want that, you would upload whatever these pieces of voice information, this unstructured data to Tartle, and then we can expand to that third pillar as underserved languages. And you can get voice input from every country across the globe. Could you imagine our, our learning algorithms at that point? And as long as we can say this person truly owns this voice signature, which is what we do with blockchain smart contracts and things like DocuSign, there's no reason it can't be done with, you know, what's going on in the voice. Agreed 100%. Uh, what I think is important, especially when we look at languages, and I, I kind of want to get a little philosophical here, but I think it's, it's really important, is that we understand as we, you know, we get so freaked out when we hear of an endangered species. Yeah, it bums me out. Yeah, it bums you out. You know, I was reading an article uh, earlier this morning, and they were talking about uh, th this one, um, like, mouse. And we think of it as, like, a mouse. I don't like mice or whatever. A field mouse? Know. Yeah, it was a, a type of mouse, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it just went extinct, you know. And I know, I know, like, tons of different animals are going extinct all the time. I don't know the rate of... Well, remember I, I said in the other episode, 996 or... 8% of all species that hit this planet have gone extinct. But I want people, as much as you can see a, a white rhino or, or you look at, you know, leopards or tigers in India, however it may be, language is that important. Mm -hmm. as, as, and, and languages are going extinct. So having machine learning to me and being able to understand and catalog these ancient languages yeah. would help humanity in such a tremendous way. Because it, I'm so glad you said that. Etymology gets me amped up. You know that. Right. You know I love talking about root words because it tells a good it tells such a phenomenal history about how language has moved and moved with people. Mm -hmm. And it brings the culture and the feeling and the emotion behind it. And it's awesome to watch that transition and how it develops over time, whether it's a function of simplicity for pronouncing something or we want to refine what that what that means to us as we become more conscious as a species and developed. Things change in our perspective. So, you know, when you're woke, you know, it's not like I woke up. You know, it's just like, oh, now I'm just like, I gotta, I'm, I'm aware. I'm truly right. like aware, you know, in that sort of social context, if I got that right. But that is, that is the beauty of it. And when you look at that, that etymology, you know, the study of language, it's the oldest history we have. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk about written documents... You know, that doesn't even come close to matching, you know, how old just a story is told. Yes. For instance, even like a parable. Or, or they're discovering ancient manuscripts all the time. Yeah. What if we have lost that language? Yeah. You know, then what would be the ability to be able to, because machines can do a great job, and we talked about this, but machines can do a great job um, in language uh, because of once the rules are put into the machine, then it can sit there and, and it can decipher. Like, I mean, uh, we know about in World War II, the Enigma box. And, and yeah, there the was Enigma a great, machine, yeah. yeah. And then how they, you know, Great Britain was translating all these U-boat, uh, you know, codes and everything else. And it kind of shifted the tide of the war because we were able to read that information that was encrypted. So machines do a great job, especially now, yeah. at encryption. The question is, how do, how do we want to use that technology? That's the part that I think... We need to have a concern for. Here's what bums me out. Skype. You ever yes. used it? Yeah. Microsoft owns them, right? All of your conversations in Skype, video conversations or calls, mm -hmm. are transcribed into their database. Every single one. So they're, I want people to get that they're transcribed into, into the, the database. database, into text. Everything you've ever said. That, what? Did you ask me if that was cool? Well, WhatsApp just, uh, Facebook just changed the policy because WhatsApp used to be like Signal. That's why everybody's going over to Signal. And then, Signal's and, and I have that. We're going to be talking about in the next few days. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do a whole episode on it. The, but the privacy policy changed in WhatsApp. Yep. And so now uh, th they're wanting to record. Um, and we'll get into it a little bit more because I want to actually print out the pri privacy policy because I think it would be a great be cool example. To actually, go over a privacy policy with somebody <laughs> that's from. Talk about a large how tech difficult company. Difficult it is to go through it. Yeah, but um, the the point is, 
you know, they make these changes and they think they're developing on a technology, but it's like, I really never gave you permission to listen to all my conversations. Mm -mm. I thought that me talking to another person in some sort of private format would stay private, but you're doing all this back end analysis so that you can then go back and develop a product or an algorithm and sell it to someone else off of my back. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's the same Google did with it's having us with the uh, translate with the books. recaptcha, yeah. right? So that it helped their, you know, um, scanning of, you know, books. archive texts and yeah, books. Right. You know, that, that bums me out. It's just not very forthright. And the fact that you're just recording me, it's like, that's that double-edged sword. And like, what's going on with it? It's so easy to, uh, we're, we're fine with that. You know, I mean, I don't really care that much. I'm, I'm not as paranoid in that arena. I don't do anything wrong. It's so not a paranoia. Really but I mean, it's yeah. like, if, if Google would have came and said, we want to help out Wikipedia, so if you fill out this recapture, find out how filling out recapture will help Wikipedia. And we're going to give, you know, every year we pledge to give, you know, a million dollars a month to, which right. is nothing to them. Nothing. $12 million. We're going to give a million dollars a month to Wikipedia. Okay, now we're all in. Now we're cool. But guess what? They don't do that. No. Do you know who does do that? Turtle. Oh, I know. Yes, yeah. exactly. I was oh, wow, I, 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 was, I was teeing you up for yeah. that. Oh, why but you we, caught on. Yeah, company comes in. Um, we'd like to buy your data because this is how we want to analyze it for this specific purpose. Mm. Cool. You paid me for the thing I created, and yes. now you're also telling me how it's going to get used. And it's not going to be used like against me. No. Thank yeah. you very much for being forthright, honest, and upfront. And now yeah, I'd be, I'm cool with sharing that but, with you. But not only, not only, see, this is the beautiful part. Not only am I able to share the data, I'm able to earn money from it, yeah. and then I get to help my world. That's, <laughs> is that just the wrong path? <laughs> does, that, does that seem like absurd? So, so not only am I helping myself yeah. with the data that I'm creating, but I'm helping my world. Yes. I'm helping the globe. Yeah. I, in my own little locale here in New Mexico, can actually have an effect on something that's happening all over the globe. Mm -hmm. It's like everything we do on Tartle has its own little butterfly effect. Yes. Not for the negative stances are going to be a hurricane, but in terms of, you know, positively solving these issues. You for us. have the ability to be able to help an island in Micronesia that just got devastated. Yep. Just by sharing your data. Yeah. And you're earning some money. Yeah, it's great. I mean, think about it. What 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 better system is there out there? Yeah, what's so, what's better than, you know, altruistically going out there and also getting paid to be altruistic? And and, and this is something um and we'll close in this Alex cuz we've been ranting, literally ranting for 17 years. We're years. helping the natural language <laughs> processing algorithms. Yes. The more right we now, talk, the more YouTube, it helps YouTube I imagine them. is. Yeah, they're like, "Oh my god, gobble it up." Yeah. Um when I, whenever we're looking and we just had a meeting uh a Tartle meeting yesterday, and we're presenting this and, and we're recognizing that, especially this younger generation, mm -hmm. you know, which is your age and younger, is it has this huge concern to help humanity, to help, you know, save if there's saving to be had. Saving is the to responsibility be had. Yeah. goes into that generation. Um, because I think our generation and older is, you know, gone. COVID's taken us out, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We own. <laughs> yeah. See ya. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, why, why is it so important? Let me, let me rephrase that because I want you to answer this very thoughtfully. Why is it so important for someone to sign up on Tartle? Not just to earn money. We get that part, but to look at what humanity and this planet has to offer us and what in our service to offer it back through Tartle. If we um, consider these up-and-coming generations, they are the ones that will take over these, essentially, positions of power, positions of resource control. And it's important that if they are championing very humanitarian missions, mm -hmm. that they're trained with a tool that is effective for that specific purpose. And if they can learn to use and adopt that, this very, very active generation, vocal generation, you know, humanitarian generation that's coming out, and you hand them this new sort of thing that says, this is going to take everything you're doing to the next step and have real impact immediately, and you'll be able to see that impact, that is why it's so important for us to bring those adopters in, mm. that generation because in the end game, when they move into these positions of power or resource control, 
we want to make sure that they're using something that is humanitarian, egalitarian, non-dogmatic, non-political. We are very truthful in how we operate, and the information we use is truthful because the effects for those people when they become decision makers will then come full circle and say, we've been using the system, we understand the power of it, let's continue to solve these things that are truly important to us. You know, we've collected the data, we've used it personally. Right. We can vouch for this. Right. As millions of people, hopefully billions, we can vouch for the value in this and how we want to solve and protect our future. And if that's 70 years out before the ocean rises five feet, let's, let's try and stop that right this second. But, but I, want, I want, maybe there's a 19-year-old out there and, you know, they're at poverty level but they have a phone yeah, and they're watching YouTube and they're going on Facebook and they're doing all these great things. You as a 19 year old have so much power with inside of you. Yeah. And data is that power. And if all the 19 year olds and all the 20 year olds and all the 25 year olds with the amount of data you guys are creating, if we would all come collectively together, it is our opportunity to change humanity. It is our opportunity to change the world. Yeah. If you're getting, to address each of these specific issues, whether it be climate change, whatever it may be. If there's a video with 20 million, 20 million views about a baby seal getting clubbed. Right. And that's bothering you. Go over to Tartle and start doing something about it. Yes. Yes, exactly. You can sit there and watch the video and then, you know, you can talk about it, blah, blah, blah. Try to create some sort of, you know, rally on Facebook or go outside and do a march. But if 20 million people that watch that video would go on Tartle and sign up and share their data, now we're doing something about it. Now we're really doing something. Because here we go. We have input from all of these people. They're sharing data towards a specific cause. The people that are in those positions to do that change, now they can listen to it and really act upon something. We don't have to see any more of those videos. And stop relying on politicians. They're just followers. Yeah. They're not leaders. We need to be responsible and we need to we, we need to rely on ourselves. Yes, 100%. And once we rely on ourselves and we come together as a self-responsible collective, mm. the amount of positive, evolutive change in this world for me as an individual and everybody else around me and everyone in all those countries is going to be so dramatic. We're going to be so shook that in 50 years will be like, now we woke. Yes, exactly. And that's, the, that's the moment when you woke, when you've solved all those problems, you realize, wow, why didn't we do this before? Mm -hmm. That's what we got to keep drive for. And I really hope I use the word woke correctly because it's way out of my nomenclature. Right. But, you know, that's, that's our focus. Yeah, and I, and I love that because when we look at this 50, 70 years we have left that scientists are saying, you know, before it's too late, it's that this is the age group. Yeah. That 19 year old that's sitting there, you have the power. You're holding the power in your hand to be able to change the world by going on to Tartle.co and allowing yourself to be able to be a part of a movement. Yeah. Tartle is a movement. I don't want to get this to sound morbid, but you and I talk about this. Right. And we bring this up with a lot of people that come in to buy data. And we ask them, what is it? that you want to look back on your life when you're on your deathbed. Mm -hmm. This is going to sound a little heavy for a second, but this is important because unless you've taken the time to reflect on what you want to leave this world with, it, you know, you're going to find yourself in a rock and hard spot to be like, wow, I wish I did more. You don't want to be saying that when you're at those last moments. Yeah. You don't want to have your, your uh, Louis Vuitton purse, your fake eyelashes, uh, fake ass and or like Lamborghini, a, Lamborghini and your, your Chanel belt on that material world. It, it, that's not what away. you're going to take when you die. That stuff just goes away. It I rots want, away. I want this generation as it phases out of this world, 70 years from now to be like, look at what we did mm -hmm. because we focused on, on how we wanted to leave it. It allowed us to change our habits and our behaviors to get to that point right now. That's the important part. Let's reflect on what that end game looks for us as a generation and what can we do actionable to take care of it at this moment. Because what you're not realizing, 19-year-old, is grandma, your grandma's only creating so much data, not very much. Not very you, much. on the other hand... Creating tons. Tons of data. Yeah. And so do you see grandma... Yeah, grandma can vote on a piece of paper yep. to put a follower in that does absolutely shit for anybody. <laughs> Politicians really... 
whether they're Republican, Democrat, whatever they may be, whatever country you're from, what have politicians really done for you? Yeah. Focus on that. Now it's time to do something for ourselves. Yes. Because that sort of momentum is, it's, it's slow. Yes. And it doesn't pay back as fast as it should. We are naturally so efficient. We are so active. And if you are emotional and passionate and you have the vitality to go out there and do something, bring the right tool with you to go do it. And that right tool is? And that right tool is Tartle. Tartle.co. Sign up today. Be a part of the movement. Yeah, change the world.